Climate change skepticism has no basis in science. A review of 88,000 scientific papers on climate change, basically all science papers published on the subject in the last decade, has found that 99.9% .9 of them agree climate change is caused mainly by humans. Live to Hay on Why Now in Wales, Mark Linus is a visiting fellow at Cornell University and the lead author of this study. Mark, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Why did you even feel the need to do this study, given how conclusive the findings were? Well, obviously, before the study was conducted, I didn't know what the number would be. And I was interested, really, to follow up on a piece of research that was done back in 2013. You might remember the famous 97% figure that came out of that. And with a further decade, more or less, having elapsed, um, I was just keen to understand, really, whether there'd been any resurgence in climate scepticism within the scientific community. Because, of course, this isn't an issue which has gone away. It's one which you hear voiced by politicians around the world and obviously, of course, from the general public. So I do think it was important at least to put a number on it and to be able to quantify what extent scientific, well, what, what extent scepticism about the human causes of climate change still exists within the scientific community itself. But there is no debate then <laughs> in the scientific world on this anymore. No, I mean, it's uh, essentially case closed. Um, there's so little uh, scepticism within the scientific community that I think we can say that we're virtually certain that this is the end of any debate really within the, within, within the experts. So certainly amongst those who publish papers on, on climate change, obviously there's a debate amongst wide, within wider society, but that's a different issue. And it's important, I think, to know that there's no debate amongst the experts, just as there isn't on, I don't know, the physics of, of gravity or the reality of plate tectonics and evolution. So when these matters become Become essentially accepted as settled fact within the scientific community, I think it's important that uh, wider society also is able to appreciate that. So we might see this figure of 99.9% .9 being used quite a lot in Glasgow, Mark, when uh, world leaders gather at the COP climate summit. We've just heard in the past hour or so that uh, Russia's Vladimir Putin will not be attending. How much does it damage the kind of validity and credibility of anything that has come up with in terms of a bigger plan in Glasgow to not have a big leader of a country like Russia there? Well, Vladimir Putin has flirted with overt skepticism in the past. And it's hardly surprising, given that uh, you know, Russia is probably the most fossil fuel dependent uh, economy in, in, in terms of its exports of oil and gas, you know, as compared to anywhere like Saudi Arabia, say. So you know, <clears throat> Putin depends on exporting fossil fuels in enormous quantities in order to, you know, to protect the economy of Russia and by extension, his regime and his maintenance in power. So I don't expect Putin to become the new Greater Thunberg. Um, it would be good, however, if more world leaders would commit to being there at COP26. This is essentially the last chance. I know you hear this a lot, but this really is the last chance for us to achieve the Paris goal of 1.5 degrees. Um, if we don't see a, a rapid cut in, in greenhouse gas emissions pretty much from next year onwards, and, uh, and cutting them by about half by the end of this decade, then the chance of, of achieving the 1.5 Paris target is pretty negligible. Mark, good to get your thoughts. Thanks for joining us from Hay on Why. Mark